Hey everyone, welcome back to our fertility series. I'm Dr. Kaylee McIsaac from AccuBalance Wellness Center. Okay, so what kinds of chemicals are we talking about? And broadly, when we think about environmental toxins, we can basically break them down into two categories or two types. The first one are called persistent chemicals or persistent toxicants. Persistent toxicants uh, are very difficult for the human body or for any animal body to break down, and they tend to stay in our systems for very long periods of time, potentially for our entire lifetimes. Um, persistent chemicals have a half-life somewhere between weeks to years. Half-life is an estimation of how long it takes for 50% of a particular substance to be completely gone from the human body. So if the half-life of something, let's say the half-life of some of these um, persistent chemicals we know is like 12 years, we would need to wait 12 years times seven at least in order to see none of that chemical present in the system anymore. So unfortunately, that means that some of these persistent chemicals we will never get rid of from our systems. We will always have them in our systems and we will potentially pass them on to our children as well. The other category of toxins are called non-persistent. Non-persistent chemicals have a half-life between hours to days. Um, so luckily, if we avoid exposing ourselves to non-persistent chemicals, we can see them gone, usually in a matter of weeks to months from our systems. Both persistent and non-persistent chemicals have been shown to influence fertility. Um, and so these next two slides are really sort of diving into the research. And then I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of references in case you want to look further and you want to know more about these effects. So this first bullet point here, HCH, PCBs, and DDT. All three of these are chemicals. They're synthetic chemicals, man-made, and they are all persistent organic pollutants. All three of them are currently banned in Canada, but as you can see here, they're still found in humans because as blood levels increase of any one of these three chemical toxicants, fertility has been shown to decrease. HCH um, has been used as an insecticide. It was banned in Canada in 2004, um, but it's actually still present in some small amounts in licensed scabies medications. So not that it's something that you would commonly use in your life, um, but if there is ever a need for you to use a lice medication, you might wanna think twice about some of the commercial products because there may still be low levels of HCH in there. Um, and then again, this is a persistent chemical that's very hard to get rid of from your body that can lower your fertility. PCBs are chlorinated compounds. Um, they're synthetic, they're like oily liquids. They tend to have been used as coolants and lubricants. Um, they've been banned in the States and Canada since 1977 because they were shown to be carcinogenic. Um, and women with the highest blood levels of PCB have a 50% decrease in their ability to fall pregnant. And if they do become pregnant, they're much more likely to miscarry. You might think if you were born later than 1977 that you might not need to worry about something like PCBs, um, but you actually really do because these persistent chemicals, because we can't break them down, that also means that they're very hard to, it takes them a very long time to break down in the environment and in the food chain as well. So they tend to do this thing called bioaccumulate in the food chain. Um, if it's present in soil, then it ends up being present in the crops that are grown on that soil. And then animals eat those crops and then we eat those animals. So we can certainly still see levels of PCBs in um, men and women who were born after these chemicals were banned um, from use. DDT is an insecticide. It was banned in 72 um, and again has been sh shown to bioaccumulate in our food. So meat, fish and dairy are the highest sources of DDT now. Pesticides in general are one of the um, more concerning chemicals that we can be exposed to that influence our fertility. Uh, this study done on female farmers in Ontario showed that fertility decreased directly in proportion to pesticide use. So organic farmers, for example, had um, better rates, higher rates of fertility than women who used a lot of pesticides on their farms. 
the worst pesticides. So this is um, research compiled by Dr. Joe Pizzorno. Um, and these percentages are percentage decrease in fertility or fertility rate decrease. Dicamba, um, glyphosate, which we all know of as Roundup, 2,4-D, organophosphates, and then thiocarbamates, which are actually fungicides. Each of these chemicals are a pesticide, a herbicide, um, a fungicide, or an insecticide. So they're all used in agriculture um, to kill um, bacteria or uh, bacteria or pests or insects on plants. Um, and while many of these toxin exposures that we're looking at here, the highest levels are going to be found in um, people who occupationally work with these chemicals, workplace exposures. Um, because they're persistent, we do still want to be concerned about them. They're still being found in our foods and the choices of our foods that we're making will have a very significant impact on the level of these chemicals in your system. Um, this next slide is talking more about the non-persistent chemicals that uh, we can find in our systems and how they influence our fertility. So started, starting even with just chlorinated water, um, chlorinated water is generally considered like a huge public health success, right? When we add chlorine to the water, um, it helps to purify and disinfect. Um, we do add chlorine to the water in Metro Vancouver and most other Canadian municipalities do as well. Um, but chlorinated water has also caused some unexpected problems. Um, this method of disinfection produces um, four what are called trihalomethane compounds. You don't need to remember what these are, um, but they're things like chloroform. They're chemicals um, that have been associated with an increased risk of stillbirth. Um, women who drink chlorinated water are also much more likely to deliver a child with smaller body length and smaller head circumference. And while the amount of chlorine that you're getting in your tap water here in Vancouver might not be that high, it's something that you probably don't want to take a chance with. Um, BPA, we're going to talk, we have, I have a whole slide on BPA, um, but in women undergoing IVF, those with the top 25% body load of BPA we're 211% more likely to have implantation failure. Um, we're gonna talk all about BPA, but that's a really significant influence. Um, a good thing to note about BPA is that a 2019 review showed that 99% of humans on earth have been exposed to BPA. We all have this in our systems. It comes in through skin, through inhalation, and then especially through ingestion. So it's something that we are all exposed to. Um, another slide on pesticides, men in, in, in the highest quartile or 25% of consumption of high pesticide residue fruit and vegetables. So that means greater or equal to one and a half servings a day of high pesticide produce had a 49% lower total sperm count and a 32% lower percentage of morphologically normal sperm when compared to men in the lowest quartile of intake or men who are consuming less than 0.5 servings a day of high pesticide residue fruits and vegetables. Um, uh, cadmium and lead have also been linked um, significantly with infertility. So blood cadmium levels in women um, uh, reduced the fertility rate by um, 21 percent and blood levels in men reduced their fertility rate by about 15 percent. Um, as might be expected, women who smoke more than 10 cigarettes a day have reduced fertility um, and because tobacco smoke contains many toxic metals and chemicals, determining which one's the worst is like really not very clear. Um, we just know that smoking causes higher rates of ectopic pregnancies, miscarriages, stillbirths, and it, ha it has effects on all of the sperm parameters. So it's just definitely something that you want to cut out of your life if you are a smoker and you want to get pregnant. Um, and then unfortunately, that the problem with environmental chemicals is not just our active choices, um, but also passive ones as well, such as living near a busy roadway. Um, there was a big research study done um, that correlated how closely a woman lives near a highway um, is, uh, correlates with her rate of infertility. So they believe that that's because of air pollutants from vehicular exhaust. Um, and that those have also been linked with male um, fertility concerns as well. 
So again, a lot of these things are under control, um, under our control. Some of them are not under our control. So all we can do is the best that we can with the information that we have. This next slide is really just for your reference. These are all of the research articles that I used to compile the previous two slides. So go ahead and take a screenshot of this if you wanna look um, that research up.